alcohol. In the immortal words of Homer Simpson, it is both the cause of and the solution to all of life's problems. But what is actually happening as you get drunk? First things first, what is it in there that is getting you drunk? Despite the difference in taste, cost, classiness, the active ingredient in almost all alcoholic drinks is the same, ethanol. Whether it's a shot of spirits, whether it's half a pint of beer, inside there is about 10 millilitres of ethanol. In the UK, we call that one unit of alcohol, and it's the amount of ethanol, amount of alcohol, that an adult can process in one hour. And even a 125 milliliter glass of wine has around about one and a half units in it. Men are recommended to drink between three and four units maximum a day, and for women, that's around about two to three. Okay, so it's the ethanol that's getting you drunk, but how does it actually get into your system? Well, when I take a sip of beer, the ethanol is absorbed through the lining of my mouth. And it turns out you can actually absorb alcohol through any of your mucous membranes, which explains the American fraternity phenomenon of butt chugging. Yep, that is exactly as you think. But please don't give it a go, guys. It is so much easier to overdose from alcohol if it doesn't go via your digestive tract, as we found in 2004 with a guy in Texas who actually died from pouring sherry into that uncomfortable place. Now once my drink has gone down the right way, about 20% of that alcohol is absorbed in my stomach, the rest in my small intestines. How fast you actually absorb that alcohol depends on things like how strong the drink is, whether you've eaten, and also whether it's fizzy, because carbonation actually speeds up the absorption process, which is why if I drink champagne, now what am I talking about, more likely Prosecco, it goes right to my head. Once it hits your bloodstream, alcohol starts messing with your brain. It enhances the effect of a neurotransmitter called GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid. Now, what that normally does is it inhibits nerves from sending messages. So if alcohol enhances the effect of GABA, less messages are sent by those nerves and you're slow to respond and you start feeling a little bit woozy. Alcohol also messes with your central nervous system, leaving you uncoordinated, and it slows down your breathing rate, your heart rate, and your brain function. Now, all that sounds rather miserable. What about the more positive effects you often see as people get more and more tipsy? Well, alcohol also affects your central cortex, making you feel less inhibited and more free. And more like it would be a really good idea to go and have a go at some karaoke. The thing is though, despite alcohol being one of the world's most popular drugs, scientists still can't agree on what the positive reinforcement must be that makes us want to keep on drinking. And they even argue on where the pleasant effects come from. Some think it must be from the metabolic breakdown of the alcohol, not the stuff itself. Time for the big question though. Why does alcohol make you pee so much? Well, you normally rely on vasopressin, an antidiuretic hormone, to control your peeing frequency. But alcohol stops you making vasopressin, hence you pee more. And all that peeing may explain why you feel so dehydrated the morning after the night before. Now, I thought that part of that horrible hangover feeling came from the reduced electrolytes you get from being dehydrated, but that may not actually explain all the effects of a hangover, because one study has actually found that the electrolyte levels for people who were hungover were very similar to people who weren't hungover. So what could explain that terrible hangover the morning after? You know what? We just don't know. It could be low blood sugar levels, it could be the toxic byproducts of alcohol breakdown, it could be an inflammatory immune response nasty. Maybe the hangover, like the alcohol's effects themselves, will always remain a mystery. Now for the somber bit. In the UK, one in three men and one in six women will develop a health problem related to alcohol. So I'd suggest taking it slow and allowing days to recover after drinking. So with all the potential pitfalls, why do we drink at all? Well, it looks like almost everything drinks from monkeys to moose and even elephants, although they're far too big to get a buzz from anything they can find naturally in the wild. Perhaps humans first discovered drinking in the natural world by eating fermented fruit. There's even a theory that the entire beginning of civilization was based on drink. Beer encouraged social bonding, but it required cooperation, farming, and infrastructure. 
It's a nice idea. I'll drink to that. Death. The final destination. The great equaliser. Whether prince or pauper, we all end up in the same place. In the ground.